Deborah from the attic and this time the attic is in England. This is the view out of the little spare bedroom where I'm sort of currently set up with um, my journal making and some other crafty bits and bobs and it's a lovely view and unusually for you it's a sunny morning. We're going to be working at some funny angles today because my overhead camera is in France so I'm trying to make do with a wee tripod and my phone which isn't how I normally film but we'll give it a go. I'm going to take you through my bullet journal planning for November but to begin with I'm going to quickly flip back through October. This is where we started with a nice little cutout leading into the calendar for October and then drawings of some of the branches of fruits and leaves that were in the French garden before we left and came back to the UK for the winter time. I've got my normal sort of diary of events on this page and I don't think I showed you this in the previous video but I was messing with some little hedgehogs. I really wanted uh, to, to have some sort of fun seasonal stuff in my journal as well. The drawings I did were inspired partly by the season and partly by a poem that I, I found online and I thought these were lovely words and I decided that I would draw the leaves to suit the words and that's quite a nice way if you're looking for a, some inspiration for a page it might be nice to use a song lyric or a poem and then just draw as you are inspired by the lyrics or the words. On this page I mapped out our return journey to the UK. Normally uh, when we land at Dover we go scooting right across the country along the M4 under London. It's a nightmare journey, it's always really really busy and this time we decided that we would take it easy and we took a little trip down the south coast of England visiting some of the sites and ending up at Arundel Castle which is a place I hadn't visited before. Massive, imposing, really nice place to get fish and chips. These little doodles on this page were inspired by some watercolours that I did last Christmas. And the idea of these was to make it look as if there were lots of layers, um, but do it on a piece of paper. So I had a hint of writing underneath and then layered them up, added some shadows and then drew some little pictures in them. And then I also wanted to keep a record of the colours that I had used in my painting. My book doesn't want to play. <laughs> And this is the last one. Uh, this is uh, actually a design that I've used on some cards that I've sent to friends in France as well because it's based on the pigeonets that you see in France, which is where people used to keep doves and I think they, they used them for meat. So um, this is something that's very common in the landscape as are these sorts of, um, I think these are cypress trees. So these ones were inspired by that but I wanted something that was a little bit more seasonal I was less uh, concerned about the layers, I, I was more interested in just the things that say autumn and um, this time of year to me. This is quite an important one, this is a regular morning routine, the, uh, the coffee in the morning. And then I had my gallery of events that happened during the month. So moving on to November. November has been inspired by some of the buildings on the high street of the little village where we live in the UK. We've got a little cottage just off um, one of these main roads and this is what they look like and this was uh, these aren't actually based on any specific uh, buildings. What I've done is I've taken elements of some buildings and I've mixed them in with others but the overall impression is very much of our little high street and then I don't know if you can see under the light but there are some fireworks in that dark night sky. Now this is an archer and olive notebook and these are notebooks that are supposed to take watercolours. I have I did some experimenting when I first had my book a year ago and I wasn't terribly happy. And even now you can see um, there is a little bit of buckling of the page. So I would argue that they're fantastic for um, dry mediums, but I'm not going to use this again for um, wet work. And this was watercolour paint that was applied with a sponge so that it wasn't heavy with the water at all. So this is um, a learning curve for me and I think my decision to stick with uh, colour pencils and inks was the right ones for these particular books. I've cut through to November and November is just a wild looking tree. Um, there's a couple of bats flying around, there's a hint of a spooky graveyard and a broken fence. And colouring the tree was very interesting because I started out colouring it black. I thought I was going to do all of this in black but then I decided I wanted um, more of a, a depth of colour in my tree and the black just made it look washed out ridiculously for black. So then I layered over the top with a dark brown 
and I layered over that again with a subtle red. The impact of that is that you get a, f a far greater sense of texture in the branches. And then because I wanted them to blend, I wanted the colour to look solid, I did some experimenting with this stuff. So this is called Pencil Blend. This is what you use to blend layers of uh, colour pencils in order to get a smoother outcome. And I was really pleased with how this worked. You apply a tiny, tiny little bit with a brush. And I think this looks really good. I'm pleased with this. I'm going to do more experimenting with it. And again, if I turn this against the light, maybe you can see the uh, sort of metallic paint blobs all around the tree because I didn't want the page to be completely dark and I thought that would add a nice touch of lightness to it. I'm all ready with my plan for November and I've got in some birthdays etc and on this page I've done some bats and I wanted to get the idea of bats just rising up into the night sky and so this is what they are. Bats are lovely and simple and easy to draw, they're great fun, you can make them go in all sorts of different angles and um, I was quite pleased with how this turned out and again I used different shades of coloured pencils so I've got a, a black and a grey and a blue in here but this time I didn't use the pencil blend this time I used a paper stump and you just go in and blend all of the colours together and colour blending is something that I'm getting quite interested in I do it quite a lot anyway but now I'm beginning to do it on a more conscious level and thinking what would be useful for other people to know and the best ways to apply it as well now as we get closer to November it might be a good time to talk about um, things that you can make as Christmas gifts or maybe make a little gift for yourself and this is a journal that I made uh, which is based on a really beautiful little digital downloadable kit that I made last Christmas and I made this journal up using it. It might be something that would be a nice thing to do through the winter months and there's even hints about how ways to use your journal so that if you're making this as a gift to give to a friend and maybe they don't know much about journaling or it's new to them and you're introducing them to it that's a really useful little thing to include. I've embellished this one with loads of extra pages and uh, lace and all sorts of bits and bobs. Uh, I've made loads of little add-ons and envelopes using the downloadable kit and I will provide a link to the kit which is in my Etsy store uh, up in the top right corner. I think that's where they pop up and uh, there are many other uh, downloadables that are available from my Etsy shop so do go and have a wee look at those. I'll provide a link to my Etsy shop below but this is what you'll see there, quite a wide range of downloadables that are instantly available and you can use them to make lovely Christmas presents. So enough of the advertising, I'm going to leave you with hopefully some inspiration for uh, what you can do in your own journal for November and maybe give you some ideas for Christmas gifts. Thanks for your time as always, thanks for watching and until we meet again, stay safe and take care.